All right, now I've got a great treat. This is a good friend of mine. We've never actually met in person, but we've been fighting the good fight together on Twitter X for several years now. Tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Rafael Sertoli, or at RafaelS7 on Twitter. And I work for Ancestralized, an app uh, that's going to come out in 2025 to help people get healthy. And I'm also the Chief Scientific Officer for Team Capero in Lisbon, Portugal. So I'm all about the keto carnivore and healthy lifestyle intervention. Yeah, and I love, uh, well, I, one of my favorite quotes in biology is also one of your very favorite quote. Yeah. What, what is the quote and who said it? So Theodius Dobzhansky, which is a famous evolutionary biologist, and if I'm not mistaken, he says, nothing makes sense in biology except in the light of evolution. Yes. And I think that's a principle that gets you very, very far when you're trying to figure out aspects of your health. Now, if I repeated that quote to the average medical doctor in the United States, mm -hmm. I would get some, somewhere between a blank stare or a judgmental scowl. They would have no idea what I was even talking about. Why is evolutionary biology, why is animal biology, why is primate biology, why are those things so important when it comes to talking about human health, human medicine, human nutrition? It's sort of the bedrock for a lot of the work that gets done in medicine and it's not appreciated. And it's, it's the very simple idea that where you came from, what you evolved eating over tens of, or hundreds of thousands of years really matters to what you should be doing today. That's the basic premise. There's a principle called the adaptation principle or adaptation hypothesis. So for instance, cows have been eating grass for millions of years, right? They are completely and thoroughly adapted to grass. Not, not only are they able to tolerate it, it's actually beneficial, right? That same adaptation principle applies to the human diet as well. And that's why Raphael and I are always harping against things that have only been in the human food stream for the last 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. We've had no time, evolutionarily speaking, to adapt to them. And there's also there's no long-term research showing that they're safe to begin with. How is that a bad thing? Canola oil has been in the human diet for five or six decades. Right. Is that long enough to have proven it's safe? Is that long enough for us to have evolved genetically to, 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 to adapt to that? No, not at all. And that's the, the problem I think that a lot of doctors and researchers miss is that we have to take into account how long it takes for us to adapt to big changes in our diet. So seed oils only exist because of recent technology where you can extract the seeds, uh, the oil from these seeds or refined carbs, right? You need this whole milling process, you need to have fields, you need to be you know, stationary, and you can't be a, someone who's traveling hundreds of kilometers during the year. So you need to change everything in order to use these new food sources. And that takes you know, hundreds of thousands of years of change, and you know, we've not had that. So we just have to accept that we have to navigate with the biology we have. Yes. And we're not doing that. Absolutely. And the average doctor and the average dietitian are only interested in what the latest studies show. And on my journey uh, to rediscover a proper human diet, which is what I think we're all doing together because we've forgotten, we've gotten confused, is I've turned more and more to archaeology and anthropology and paleoanthropology, primate biology. That's where, where I turned increasingly like I barely glance at the newest nutrition research with regards to what humans should actually eat. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I misled? No, I think you're making sure that the fundamentals are tight and they make sense and that's what it, it takes when you're going to interpret something that's really complicated. It's controlling variables, that's using the complex medicines that can have all sorts of effects or dietary interventions which are millions of molecules even that are way more complex than the drug. You need a framework to interpret that and that's what evolutionary biology gives you. It gives you a chance to sort of stress test ideas before you put the millions of dollars behind them. If you posit that we can adapt to the same diet as a cow, as you were saying, that's absurd. That example is obvious, but maybe some aspects of the human diet aren't so obvious to people. But 
I think the seed oils, the flour, and the sugar are the three big things that stand out. Absolutely, and that those are the three things right. that I recommend people remove first. Any added sugar, most natural sugar as well, all grains, all vegetable seed oils, because those are the things that we've been eating for the shortest amount of time. And we're talking about the geological time scale here, almost, not quite, but very, very long time scale that our ancestors have been reproducing successfully on this planet. That's important, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so if you just look to the latest uh, article in you know dietetics and nutrition, you're gonna be missing a huge part of the, the bedrock mm -hmm. of understanding of a human diet. Right, and you know you have a lot of specialization in medicine, right? I wanna go see the specialist, I wanna have the best care. But I think the sort of care you need in medicine is much more of the type where you're synthesizing information from a, a disparate sources. So like you said, paleoanthropology, from molecular biology to yes. epidemiology. Yes. That takes a lot of skill and you need someone who has to have a basic understanding of how these things work together. No one can be an expert in, every, in everything, but you need to understand how it all works together. So, you know, prioritize general medicine, I would say, over specialization. Yes. So the, to go from being an average doctor to being a very good doctor, you should probably stop blindly, thoughtlessly following the algorithm and actually try to understand the basic physiology and the basic root cause of metabolic disease. That'd probably be a much better strategy to become a better doctor. Yeah, absolutely. You need to have a, a root cause mindset. You can't just stop with the symptoms and you can't just stop with what you've learned in med school, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. You actually have to challenge the ideas in subjects where you're not comfortable spending time, like paleoanthropology. What is a stable isotope analysis? What does that tell us about bone, what we ate? Yeah, those are seemingly abstract questions, but they have huge implications for the diet you can recommend to someone today, and that is really important. Yeah, one of the one of the parts of the physician's oath is to first do no harm. And if you're thoughtlessly following an algorithm, if you're mindlessly recommending the dietary nutrition you, re, uh, recommendation you just got from the latest article, you're quite possibly doing harm. Yeah, it's very easy to harm patients or to put out bad research. And one way you can you know, guard against that is trying to make sense of it through the evolutionary lens. And look, it's, it's not enough, but it's necessary. Yes. And it, that's where I think it starts. I love it. I need to have you on the YouTube channel. Hey, my pleasure. Will you come on? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right.